Well, good evening again. My name is Helen Grant. I am the Chief Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Officer for Richland District 2, and it is my pleasure to welcome all of you to our fifth annual Black History Month Honoree Recognition Program. We are so happy to see you all here this evening. We've planned a special tribute to 14 very special people, and we're so happy that you have joined us in that tribute. When we conceived of the idea of a Black History Month recognition program, I spoke with Dr. Davis and I told him that I really wanted to honor people who were locally connected to Richland School District 2. And so it's specifically designed to give us people who are either graduates of our district, employees of our district, or people who live in our community or have some kind of significant um, contribution or closeness to Richland District 2. And the reason that I asked to be allowed to do that is because we, we teach about national and international figures all the time in our schools. And our students have that opportunity to learn that. But those of us who have worked for any length of time realize that it's the people in the local area. It's the person in the beauty shop, in the barber shop, in your house of worship. It's the person in your higher education field, those people that live in your neighborhood, that um, vote in the same precincts that you vote in, are the ones that are really the foot soldiers making a difference. Those are the people who are really making those significant contributions to black history and to black culture. And so that is why we set this event up to honor all of you who are here locally with us. Some of you who are honorees may receive a call or an email from me saying a student saw the show and thinks they might want to do what you do or would like to know more about how you got to where you are now. That's the reason why we do that, so we can make those connections so that we can continue to build a strong community. And so we're just very, very happy that you are all here with us. We could not do this without the support of our magnificent Board of Trustees of Richland School District 2. I'd like to introduce them to you this evening. Um, would you please stand, board members, when I call your name? Dr. Teresa Holmes is our board chair. Mr. James Manning is our vice chair. Ms. Amelia Mackey is our secretary. Our other board members, Ms. LaShonda McFadden, Ms. Lindsay Agostini, Dr. Monica Scott, and Dr. Cheryl Caution Parker. Board members, we thank you, we appreciate you so much because we know that none of this is possible without your direction and your leadership, and we're very grateful to have that leadership here in our district. At this time, would you please stand with me as we listen to the Muller Road Middle School choral students sing, Lift Every Voice and Sing. No? Okay. Well, slight change of plans which you can be seated, <laughs> which reminds me of something that I didn't write down that I was supposed to tell you. I am sorry. We are doing a hybrid program this evening. It is a combination of virtual and in person. And so much of what you will see in terms of the honorees, the introductions of our honorees, and also those persons' um, response to being recognized by the district, you will see on the screens that are around the room and then you'll actually get the chance to see them in person as we ask each honoree to come up um, to receive a token of our appreciation and to take a picture with us. And so we're going to skip over the singing of Lift Every Voice and Sing, and we're gonna start with the recognition of our honorees in categories. We recognize people in the category first of art and music, then in education, then in public service, and then in health, science, technology, math, and engineering. And here's how I've planned for it to go. I have these great visions in my head, and I'm counting on you to help me make this work this evening. You will see on your screens an introduction. At the end of that introduction, the honoree will come forward, and they'll come up here on the stage. 
we will take a picture, and while we're doing that, you'll actually hear from the honorees um, expressing their sentiments about the program this evening. So we're going to try to move everyone quickly so we don't keep you here overly long this evening. Are y'all going to be with me? All right, very good, thank you so much. So we're going to start with the um, category of art and music. We are so excited to share with the Richland Two community those uh, members of our Richland Two family that we're celebrating this year as Black History Month honorees. Dr. Davis and I are privileged to be able to introduce them to you today. And the first one we want to share with you is Ms. Kristen Claiborne. Uh, Ms. Claiborne is a master teacher extraordinaire who really enjoys teaching. And Dr. Davis, I know we have both had the opportunity to hear her students perform. And I often think that one of the ways we know how well a teacher is working with and the relationship she has with those students is by the product that they give back to her yeah. and her choral students are extraordinary absolutely she's a choral director at Blackfoot High School I think she's been there a total of 10 years now um, extraordinary talent um, I've only I've also seen her interact with her students outside of the uh, the choral experience um, she also has served as or I don't know if she continues to serve but I know she served as the assistant basketball coach um, boys varsity and at one time also filled in um, throughout the course of a year uh, making her one of the few, if not the only, um, female um, boys basketball coach in 5A. Um, just an extraordinary young lady, extraordinary talent, um, a person who clearly knows what her passion is, um, and who is committed and dedicated to the lives of young people and helping them find and develop their own passions. I believe she's teaching a course this year where she has about 14 uh, males in her classroom and she talks about the experience about teaching them and how rewarding that's been for her. And so she's continuing to grow and continue to um, just impact young people. Uh, and so we're so very proud that uh, she's a, 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 a being recognized this year during Black History Month in Richland School District too. We're extremely proud of her. And one of the things that I found out in the process of speaking with her is that she's truly committed to remaining a classroom teacher. Mm -hmm. Even though she's continuing her education and uh, moving forward with additional degrees, she said teaching is her calling and that's her passion. Mm -hmm. And so we're very pleased to recognize Ms. Kristen Claiborne in the area, of course, of art and music. Yes, congratulations, Ms. Claiborne. I certainly want to thank Richland too um, and all of our leadership and the selection committee and whoever was involved in um, bringing up my name um, in the midst. I really am grateful for that. Um, I certainly want to thank Blythewood High School um, for being home for the past 10 years and I would not be able to recognize black history and black culture and black music the way I could if my students were so receptive. Um, so to all of my alumni and my current students, thank you and I love you. I'm just very grateful to be be doing what I'm doing. Um, gratitude is a huge part of who I am and, and how I function as a professional and as a human being. And so I'm just grateful to get to do what I do every day. Um, pandemic, no pandemic. I'm to even have a song in my heart to be able to share with other people um, and to, to sing with other people. I'm grateful. We're so pleased to be able to recognize, also in the category of art and music, Mr. Andre Delane. Mr. Delane is one of our Richland II graduates, a graduate of Richard, Richland Northeast mm -hmm. High School, and is a worship leader here in our area, but also a recording artist, a songwriter, and a singer. We're just really pleased that he's among our group this year. Did you also know that uh, he said he discovered his passion early as a child? And what I love most about that is that here in the district, we speak on discovering your passions. And not only that, is that he understood that he was gifted in music, making up songs as a kid and for the things that he wanted to do, whether it was going outside and, and also believing in following your dreams and never giving up in the pursuit of your dreams, I think which speaks uh, directly to the present uh, moment of Richland 2 and the future of Richland 2 
So it's no wonder he's a Richland Northeast graduate and a product of this school district where we still believe in helping our students find their gifts and talents, their gifts and talents, and then giving them that pathway once they discover those passions that they have. And so it's it's an honor to recognize him and uh, hold him up for future uh, passionate songwriters and musicians to see an example of, of what a Richland II education can do. Absolutely, and one of the things that he shared with us is that uh, as a lifelong learner, he's always, even in the space of being on stage with nationally known recording artists, looking to learn and um, understands that you start where you are and appreciate where you are, learn everything where you are so that when you start towards that journey of where you want to be, you've got that background knowledge ready to move forward. He's a joy to be with, to be around, and we're happy to recognize him this year. Yeah, congratulations. First of all, I want to just acknowledge my wife and my children and for just the impact that they've had on my life and allowing me the opportunity to run after every goal, every dream um, that I could ever imagine. Uh, I definitely appreciate them. To my parents for instilling in me um, everything that I, that I know today, you know, even outside of music, um, to be empowering me and teaching me to how to be a husband, how to be a father, you know, and how to be determined and committed to my craft and my dreams and my goals to not give up because things are hard. I want to say I appreciate them to my friends and, and associates to the opportunities that they've given me, um, to the stages that they've allowed me to be on. Uh, I'm very, very much so grateful. person we want to recognize, we're recognizing in the category of art, but really could have been in the category of technology or engineering. Dr. Davis, it's really a pleasure to be able to recognize Mr. Anto Antonio Kenyon for his work here in Richland District 2. Yeah, it's indeed uh, exciting and I'm super uh, proud that uh, we have an opportunity and our school district to recognize uh, our employees um, and and celebrate them during the month uh, of Black History Month. Um, Tony has a unique ability, uh, one that I've come to uh, depend on quite a bit, and that's his storytelling. Um, to be able to give him a vision and an idea and to watch him take that vision and idea and put it into a story that we're able to communicate and then captivate our intended audience, which is, of course, our Richland Two family. And I don't know if many people know, they probably heard his voice on multiple commercials here in the Midlands area, but also uh, has done some work for South Carolina State University's football team as he's helped tell their story uh, from a media perspective. And so we're very excited to be able to recognize Tony uh, and celebrate him as well during Black History Month. I've had the opportunity to work with him since I've been here in Richland District 2. And one of the things that I think makes him such an extraordinary storyteller is his ability to deeply listen mm -hmm. and truly understand what a person is saying, if they're responding to a question in an interview, or if we're trying to describe a vision for something we want to see happen, to really deeply listen and understand what it is that we want. And I truly admire persons who have that ability to take that and translate it into a story, a production, something that yeah. goes forward that we can all be proud of. And, and I often look back and think, wow, I had a good idea, but Tony really made it a great production. And so we're very pleased to recognize his talent and we're um, glad to have him as part of our Richmond yeah. family. Yeah, congratulations, Mr. King. Good evening. First and foremost, I thank God uh, for all of the blessings God has bestowed upon me from my parents and my sister, my wife, Audrey, all of our families, all those friends that have supported me along the way. I thank all of you and I love you all so dearly. I wanna thank Joe Burke for introducing me to the Richland Two family, uh, for bringing me in and trusting me to do the things that the district needed to have done within the field that I am in. Uh, he opened that door for me and I am so grateful for it, uh, which led me to Libby Roof, uh, who has entrusted me 
uh, with being able to tell the story, a story, the story of Richland School District 2, uh, lets me do the things I need to try to do uh, to try to get those stories out. I thank you so much, Libby. Um, to my co-workers, an incredible team of people that I work with in communications, thank you all so much for all of the support that you give me. And to Dr. Grant and her staff and the committee, thank you so much for noticing the things that I have done. Uh, many of you I have worked closely with on projects, and I look forward to working with you again on more projects to come. Thank you so much for bestowing this on me. Thank you so much. That was the category of art and music. And now we're going to have a wonderful example of that art and music. We are um, going to be serenaded through a string quartet with songs mourn in the new world, a, med a medley. Uh, we have Janine Parnell, who's on first violin from Spring Valley High School. Rosa Kelly on second violin from Condor Arts Integrated Magnet School. Alvira Butler on viola from Joseph Keels Elementary Schools. And is it Idris? Idris. Idris. Idris Chandler on cello, who's one of our community volunteers. Please enjoy.
showing your appreciation one more time. It was fantastic. We're so grateful for our staff here at Richland too and our community members who don't find it robbery to participate with us on events like this. Thank you so much. At this time, we will recognize our honorees in the field of education. In the category of education, we have the opportunity this year to recognize Dr. Walter Curry. Dr. Curry is the founder of Renaissance Publications, where his company publishes books mainly based on um, oral history and genealogy. And um, it's a special thing, Dr. Davis, to be able to research the history of your family and then put it together in such a way that others can learn not only about the family members, but about the time period that they lived. Yeah, Dr. Curry states that he believes in the importance of retaining history and specifically African-American history and that understanding your past gives you voice and it also helps you in your current and in your, pre in your present and in your future endeavors. And the importance of passing that historical context and that uh, historical information on to future generations. He's done a phenomenal job of capturing the importance of history in his books and being, I believe he's also, uh, uh, his history books is being used with some social studies standards as well in the state of South Carolina. So uh, just a, indeed a treasure and someone um, worthy of this recognition. Yeah. We're happy to have him as a part of our community. He lives in our Richland 2 area um, and look forward to having more of a partnership with him as we think about the history of our own school district and, and what we can learn and gain from that and how we can preserve that in such a way that our students 20 years from now, 50 years from now, will be able to look back and understand the progress that's been made, where we started and where we've come from. Absolutely. Congratulations to Dr. Curry. I uh, just want to thank uh, Dr. Um, Helen Grant, uh, her staff, um, the board members, um, uh, Dr. Davis, uh, the teachers, the students, my family and friends. Um, and, and, and this award um, is not about just my work, but it's about um, my uh, uh, accomplishment uh, which is a shared accomplishment um, that we all should cherish, that African-American history and culture is relevant, and that this award is a testament to my work um, in promoting African-American history and culture, and looking forward to continuing to work with Richland II um, and the community. It's always a pleasure to be able to recognize our Richland II graduates and within this area of education, let's talk a little bit about Mr. Joseph Bias. Uh, Mr. Bias works very closely with our Richland Northeast mock trial students and he's worked with mock trial for many years. He's an attorney by trade, um, works now as general counsel and uh, special assistant to the president of Midlands Technical College, uh, Dr. Ronald Raines, who was one of our awardees next, last year um, in 2021. But we're especially happy to be able to recognize this year Mr. Bias for his work with our students. Uh, interesting story, Mr. Bias was introduced to mock trial in elementary school at E.L. Wright, I think, by his teacher because he talked a lot in class. And that was his first introduction to law. Uh, so utilizing something that he was, uh, I'm sure, passionate about, which was talking and communicating, had an opportunity to participate in a um, extracurricular activity that began to hone his skills when it comes to uh, uh, being an attorney. Uh, he now gives back time to his alma mater uh, and helping that mock trial, or has given back time to this alma mater, helping their mock trial at Richland Northeast High School, um, and just believes in reinvesting into uh, future generations of lawyers. Uh, and also, again, serving as a model um, of what you can be 
um, with a Richland II um, education and of course with your own desires and drives um, when you maximize your gifts and talents. So it's always a pleasure to be able to recognize um, our very own right here in Richland School District too. So uh, congratulations to Dr. Biaz. Thank you so much. I'm of the opinion that awards are always nice. They don't really mean much, but when you get it from the district where you went and uh, the community where you grew up and the people who you have the pleasure of working with and uh, deal with, uh, it means something more. So I I'm not gonna lie to you in that uh, it was touching. It was uh, amazing that uh, I can be included on that list of all of these wonderful individuals who've been doing great things across the uh, state and the nation. So uh, selfishly, I, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, I've done something in my life to be included on that list and uh, incredibly touched and honored uh, to uh, be recognized. Another Richland II graduate that we recognize this year is Dr. Derek Wise. Dr. Wise works with South Carolina State University in the 1890 research program, where he really goes into the community to try to assure that community members, students, and parents, and households have access to opportunities. And yeah. one of the most important of those, and we know something about that, is Wi-Fi. Um, when our students were home and needed to do work, it became a highlight of concern of, especially in rural areas where students did not have access to hotspots or did not have a place to go where it would be easy for them to get to their classes and get to their work. And so Dr. Wise works very hard in that area. Yeah, Dr. Wise is a graduate of Spring Valley High School, I believe, and credit Spring Valley as where he kind of started his, his role uh, and in leadership. Um, and uh, through his work, he is really committed to, um, uh, he remembers his, I think I remember hearing that he remembers his struggles financially as a student. And so he's been committed to helping offset those financial barriers for students as they are progressing through college. Um, and by doing so, he also wants to remove the access barrier um, by creating opportunity for access for others to be able for them to be able to pursue their their dreams as well so uh, we're thankful uh, again to have um, an individual uh, such as Dr. Wise here uh, in our community uh, from our school district um, who is helping others realize their dreams um, and also uh, giving them an opportunity to do so without too much financial strain. Right, he and, his, he and his family have the WISE Foundation that actually provides scholarships to students to help them offset some of the cost of higher education. So both in terms of him making opportunities available for resources and supports that are needed, he and his family also are providing that financial assistance to students. And we're very grateful for the work that they do. Uh, what a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing to do. And uh, we'll get into Dr. Wise and his family. Congratulations. The Bible says to whom much is given, much is required. I am so grateful and so honored just to be acknowledged um, for this prestigious award with my high school district. Um, it means a lot to me. Um, Richland County School District 2 um, is the district and the schools that has raised me and to have had an impactful um, instances into who I am today. Um, I would love to thank um, God for just giving me the opportunity just to be a blessing um, to my parents who have stood by me um, day and night and who have been my greatest supporters to all of my family and my friends um, and then to all of my students who I have met along the way who continue to encourage me and help me to be um, better as I continue on this journey to help someone along the way.
Also in the field of education, we are recognizing Dr. Joseph Watson. I think probably Dr. Davis all over the state of South Carolina, you can run into people in education who know Dr. Watson because he has served in so many roles in many places across the state. Um, yeah. He has been a superintendent, an assistant superintendent, an administrator, a principal, a teacher. He's worked on the college level with over 50 years of experience in education before he retired, with half of that time being with us in Richland School District 2. Like, could you imagine an education career that had spanned 50 years? Um, Dr. Watson is indeed a, a trailblazer and a mentor to many. Um, the first African American to receive his uh, a, a master's degree from, I believe it was a master's degree? His, his doctorate his degree. His doctorate degree mm -hmm. from, uh, in, in education administration from the University of South Carolina. Yeah. The very first one, and I think about all the administrators who have come through this state and uh, through that program and specifically from this school district that have received their doctorate degree from the University of South Carolina in Education Administration. And doc, our very own Dr. Watson was the very first person to do that, as well as a charter member of SCAFSI, the South Carolina Association of Black School Educators, um, where I now have the uh, awesome um, uh, distinction of being starting the Superintendent Satellite Affiliate Division of that. But Dr. Watson actually started the charter for that. So indebted to him, uh, he is indeed a mentor, a friend, and someone worthy of this recognition and celebration from our school district. Thank you for your service to our district and, and in the field of education for over 50 years. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And so many people who know Dr. Watson don't know his background because he's so very humble. Yeah. He's not one to boast about what he has done, um, but we think about the trail that he blazed for those who have come after him, who are still coming after him and it truly makes him very worthy of this recognition and we're proud to have him as one of the people we're recognizing this year in the field of education. Congratulations Dr. Watson. I would like to say that it was quite a pleasure when I found out that I was an honoree and um, since I found out, I have been doing a lot of introspection and I've been thinking about myself more than um, probably than I have in the last few years. Uh, and I, I just felt joy knowing that uh, something good like this was happening in our school district. Um, it tells me, you know, the fact that I'm so overjoyed by it it reminds me of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King's sermon called The Drum Major Instinct. And, and he said, everybody likes praise. Uh, it's one of the things that people like the most. The only time they don't like praise is when they're going towards somebody else. I'm not guilty of that, but uh, yeah, this, this is quite an event. Uh, and I'm glad to be a part of it. This time, I am delighted to introduce to you Mr. Tyler Davis. Mr. Davis is representing the community portion of our uh, program tonight, and he's going to share with us in his own way a spoken word piece. Thank you. I thought I'd never find love. Then one day, I had a kaleidoscope dream that you finally showed me your true colors. You were a broken stained glass window in a church filled with worshipers, not even aware of what religion they're practicing, but somehow they were willing to give their all to you. Suddenly my mind becomes flooded with thoughts like, what do I have to offer? I'm a terrible swimmer, but then I hear you say, he who have little faith, don't you know that you can levitate? You are blind, but I will see for you. When you see, no way I will part the sea for you. So now that the tears soaked feelings are, burdens are beginning to weigh down on me, I ask myself, I ask God, was I made to lie down in green pastures, 
Can I lead those beside still waters? Do I restore souls? Can I make you believe or better yet, do I? I believe. I believe that I have this little light. And this light of mine, I'm going to let it shine because if there isn't one thing that's for sure, something is. It's going to get dark. Sometimes dark and lonely, but yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because maybe, just maybe, love is my religion. If so, then I guess I've been straddling the fence for some time now. Church folk probably would call me a backslider. Once a womanizing hypocrite with soul ties strong enough to wrestle with the arms of Samson, still I can't explain how it took your love to come along and break every chain. You freed my mind, you washed me away, baptized me in your Holy Spirit filled pool of love. You are my savior. You are my victory. Without you, there is none. I thought I'd never find love. And one day I found God. I like to introduce myself of God always. I'm Tyler Davis. I'm from Florence, South Carolina, if anybody knows where that is. <laughs> Give it up for yourselves tonight. Y'all look lovely. I'm nervous, I got my name, as always, but I feel it's good nerves. Um, when you're doing something important, you should be nervous. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, I've been dealing with a lot this week. And uh, as you go through trials in life, that's what you do. You deal with things and you live through it. I'm glad that uh, mistakes didn't make me, even though I made mistakes. Life is what you make it. Innocent bystanders, guilty bystanders. We're lucky if a dollar and a dream is what they hand us. That ain't even enough to make it off the corner. It's going to take a lot to come up off that block, boy, if you want to. That's pain and sacrifice, but I'm just trying to live my life. Although I'm tired of slaving in these fields every day and night. You see, the grind ain't free and the shine ain't free. And sacrificing my time at a nine to five ain't free. I got to keep the peace to keep the peace, right? Keeping his face on our pieces don't really mean we know Jesus. Check the thesis, place the pieces. Drug dealers, hustlers, teachers, preachers. Somehow they all just trying to reach us. That's all something oddly in common, knowing not much is coming. Find myself thinking twice about the category that I'm in. But they say, life is what you make it. Real going to always recognize the real, so please don't fake it. Some people are going to love your success. Some going to hate it. Well, opportunity will pass you by if you don't take it. So don't ever mistake it because life is body counts on the rise. Watch as the number towers. Restraints placed on our brains by these soul devourers. But if you just break those mental chains, you decrease their powers. 60 minutes, men march, and we in these streets for hours. I know the hand you dealt shall be played according to what you bid. But life is based on what you gave and not only what you get. The fancy clothes, the brand new J's and jewelry won't do it. If you don't know from where you came and who you're going to leave with. It's 35 years on this earth. Feels like I just arrived. 35 years to know my worth. Why do I feel deprived? It's like Noah kicked me off the ark. I'm one of a kind and I shouldn't be alive. But in the abyss of that deep dark, still somehow, Father God, I survive. So with success on my mind, my thoughts are stacked up through the roof. Thinking if these walls could talk, I wonder would they tell the truth? They'll probably say something like, life is what you make it. Real gonna always recognize the real, so please don't fake it. Some people are going to love your success. Some are going to hate it. Well, opportunity will pass you by if you don't take it. So don't ever mistake it because life is the pastor. The pastor that used to be a thug. The thug that prays like a preacher. Round world, spin round. Tell me who's your teacher? Who's your maker and who's going to reach you? Don't mess around and let the arms of Lucifer greet you. Choose that water over wine, the fish over the swine. Meditate to elevate your heart, soul, and your mind. You got 20-20 vision, but can't see that you're still blind? Just look within yourself. You'll be surprised what you can find. I used to cry because of that pain, y'all. Now I smile because of the same. This brother finally made it. It wasn't that I sat back and waited. It was all anticipated, yet all premeditated. I studied hard for this one moment. Still, I wonder how they grade it. Well, some say life is what you make it. Real going to always recognize the real, so please don't fake it. Some people are going to love your success. Some going to hate it. But opportunity will pass you by if you don't take it. So don't ever mistake it. Life, peace, power, love. Love y'all. Peace. We probably should have been doing this. 
<laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Davis. Thank you so much for that. At this time, we would like to recognize our honorees in the area of public service. You know, school systems can't operate in isolation. Um, it doesn't work well if we're islands. We need the people that work in public service and other industries to be our partners. And so we are really happy to recognize one of those partners today, Dr. George Ashford, Jr. Uh, Dr. Ashford is the pastor, the lead pastor of Journey United Methodist Church, which is right here in our school district. Yeah, and uh, I think Jamie Volmo wrote the book, Schools Can't Do It Alone. and. Uh, uh, Dr. Ashford is an example of understanding that, uh, a prime example of understanding that, uh, that, that principle. Um, he has, his church has a long-standing partnership with Longleaf uh, Middle School, which is right across the street from this church. Uh, and he believes in, by lifting the school, he lifts the community. Um, and so that is a practice throughout the, uh, his ministry. Uh, and uh, he's been, he and his church and his members have been active um, volunteers and participants in uh, Richland School District 2 and that we are better for it. Um, and so we're very proud and excited to be able to recognize uh, his commitment to education, but also and more importantly, his leadership within our community and his commitment uh, to Richland, uh, Richland School District 2. Um, father of two Richland 2 graduates and a husband of a Richland 2 employee. And uh, can't, of course, go without saying, and also a graduate of my alma mater, which, of course, makes him a great person. <laughs> Absolutely. We won't take anything away from it. <laughs> Congratulations, Dr. Ashford. We're so happy to have you in this class of honorees. I was elated, um, ecstatic, I think um, even humbled to be considered um, by Richland District 2 for this honor and an award. Certainly what I feel we must do in our church is be present in the community. Church and community are synonymous, have been and have always been for me. Um, proud of myself becoming a pastor and, and now that I have been a pastor for 30, 30, not going on 30 years, um, and Journey Church is strategically located within the community. I think we're about um, maybe a thousand feet from a middle school and, and about a mile and a half from another elementary school. So we strategically located Journey Church here in um, the greater Northeast area, and we wanted a location where we would be directly impacted and could have impact on our school. So when I saw the school, I said, hey, that would be a great place for a church. Another of our Richland Two graduates that has had a tremendous impact on our community and who we honor this year is Ms. Tamika Isaac Devine. She is a graduate of Spring Valley High School, and many of us know her from serving as a city councilwoman for the city of Columbia for over 20 years. But she works hard in our community, and we are just delighted to be able to recognize her for the work that she's been doing. Tremendous, tremendous public servant. Um, first black woman to serve on city council, and I believe she did it from an at-large position. Um, and so uh, because of her public service and her commitment to representing those who have a little voice or no voice at all, and uh, although uh, uh, she's not uh, on city council anymore, I know someone who will continue to be a public servant. Uh, and continue to push issues forward in the community that need to be um, uh, illuminated so that we can address them head on. Um, she is indeed a person who believes in everyone has the ability to make a difference. And uh, we all have felt the difference that she's made in our city uh, and in our community. So a well, uh, a, a, a worthy honoree uh, here at Richland School District 2 and another example 
And I have to say that another example of uh, a Richland II education um, and uh, what it can do for you and uh, an example of that our students can look at and say, you know, here's a person that I can look up to and I can admire and that I can inspire to be just like. So congratulations. And you know, one of the reasons we tailored this particular program for people who are part of our Richland II family is so that our students really could have that yeah. opportunity to think, she did it, I can do that too, or I might be interested in something like that. I wonder if I could talk to her about how she did it, what kinds of things went into the preparation of it. And so we're very, very proud of her, very, very happy that she has agreed to continue to be of public service, yeah. even though not in elected office currently. Powerful. Congratulations. Congratulations. I am truly honored to, to be recognized by uh, the school district that raised me. I grew up in Richland too, uh, went to Lonnie B. Nelson, E.L. Wright, and Spring Valley High School. And the teachers and administrators here uh, poured into me uh, and along with my parents uh, helped me become the woman I am today. And so it is really uh, humbling to be recognized by this um, amazing district who is still doing amazing stuff and producing amazing uh, community advocates and servants. And so I just uh, thank Richland too for this recognition uh, and wants to continue to give my support to this wonderful district who has given so much to me. In the area of public service, we are recognizing Mr. Michael Tolliver. Mr. Tolliver owns his own barbershop, Tolliver's Barbershop, here in our Richland II community. And some people might think, why a barber? Why in the area of public service would you put that? But if you have not had a chance to get to know Mr. Tolliver, to talk with him about where he came from and why he does what he does, you may not understand the importance of the barbershop in the life of a neighborhood. And especially for African Americans, we often saw barbers as our entrepreneurs. They mm -hmm. owned their own businesses and they showed us how you operate a business and the barbershop is a special place. I, as, a, as a woman taking my young children, my two sons in, I know that the conversation always changed and I always felt a little bad when I walked through the door because it changed. But there's something special about what happens in a barbershop. Well, you, you, you can't be from Columbia and not know about Tolliver's right. Barbershop. That's number one. And uh, if you know, uh, Michael Tolliver has take, took over for his father who owned the, the barbershop first and of course passed down that entrepreneurial spirit to him which I think he also works very hard in community to share entrepreneurial secrets and entrepreneurial thoughts and create a space where people can talk about ownership in the barbershop but indeed it is a special place in the African American community specifically for a black men um, and uh, there's a different lingo in the barbershop when you were there uh, but it's also a place where uh, I think he's quoted as saying that, you know, a haircut can change the way a person looks on, the uh, looks on the outside, but also the way that you feel on the inside. And so giving, having a quality haircut does give you a sense of pride uh, and, 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 and motivation and inspiration uh, to look your very, very best. And so it's important uh, to be able to do so. But, but I think more importantly, uh, Mr. Tolliver has continue from the legacy of his father in this community is a safe space uh, where men of color, black men in particular, can come and share, um, come and learn, uh, come and part wisdom um, to one another and on younger um, boys in our communities. And uh, it is uh, indeed an honor to be able to recognize him, not only for um, his commitment to our community, um, uh, and, and also being an example of what an entrepreneur is, but also by continuing that tradition um, um, of creating camaraderie within the community amongst uh, black men. And Mr. Tolliver talked about use of hands. Um, he told us the story of his father those, the hands that cut hair were the hands that as a younger man picked cotton. 
and eventually were the same hands that shook the hand of a president of the United States of America. And he talked about the importance of a trade and having the ability to work with your hands to provide for your family. And sometimes we don't hear a lot of discussion about those people who go out, who are pillars in our community, who work with their hands, who use the trades that they learned in school to provide for their family and to keep and uplift the entire community. And so that's one of the reasons why he is in this area of public service. We believe him to be a public servant um, to our community. Yes. He brings students in. Um, occasionally to work in the barber shop, to, to mentor, um, he does shadowing programs, trying to give what his father gave to him on to other young men and young women who are interested in barbering. And a Richland II graduate. Absolutely. Richland Northeast High School. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Congratulations. Congratulations. First and foremost, I want to say thank you so much for this um, for this award. It's definitely an honor just to be considered, let alone selected. Uh, so I'd like to thank the selection committee, um, especially Dr. Grant, for this, uh, like I said, for this pleasure. Um, secondly, I'd like to thank my father for um, being a tremendous in inspiration for getting involved in public service, but also um, particularly barbering. Sorry about that. I was trying to put our next honoree into a different category. I don't know, that might be something, Ms. Edwards, that you might have to think about there. <laughs> At this time, we are going to have a presentation by the Ridgeview High School Steel Pans under the directorship of Mr. Wesley Hips. They provided our pre-event music for us. And students, we are so very appreciative to you for all that you have done in this program. And we thank you so much. And we look forward to hearing from you at this time.
Thank you so much to our Ridgeview High School Steel Pans. We appreciate you very, very much. And at this time, we are going to recognize our honorees in the category of health, science, technology, math, and engineering. One of our categories is health, science, technology, math, and engineering. And we have the opportunity to honor in that category, Ms. Ashley Edwards. Ms. Edwards um, describes herself as a creator and mm -hmm. serial entrepreneur. She really does believe in that entrepreneurial spirit of having a plan, putting that plan into work and building it into what her vision says that it is. And she is a Blythewood High School graduate yeah. as well. Co-founder of Iconic Sports Performance a woman and minority and veteran-owned performance training facility right here in Columbia, uh, believes in work ethic and that work ethic can transcend uh, uh, any uh, discipline uh, and the importance of working hard and giving your very best. Um, said from an early age, her family instilled confidence in her uh, and uh, she believes in uh, putting that confidence to work. I think it takes a lot of confidence to be a serial entrepreneur for sure. Uh, and what I love most about it, she, she shared that she felt like the only thing that could get in your way was the limitations that you put on yourself. And That's clearly, right. she's not putting any limitations on herself. And again, an individual that we can stand and recognize and celebrate uh, as well uh, as a contributor to our community uh, and as a representative of uh, Richland 2 Education right here in our very own school district and community. So congratulations yeah. to her. Thank you so much for doing what you do for our community, for our students. I think those that have bestowed the award to me um, absolutely helped create me. I think they've contributed a lot to who I've become. Um, specifically, Richland too. I am a product of. I graduated from Blythewood High School, uh, elementary school at Bethel Hanbury, and Denton Middle School as well. Uh, but Mr. Roger Wiley specifically had a great hand in my basketball development. I played AAU with him for a number of years. Also volunteered coach on the teams that he's created. Um, and I definitely believe that he's instilled some discipline in me for sure that I believe has helped me persevere a ton of different things um, and created the entrepreneurship journey that I'm on today. When I think of our next honoree, I immediately think of STEM programs and her passion for exposing students to the STEM field. Her name is Dr. Kimberly Mulligan. She is a graduate of Spring Valley High School and currently serves as the Assistant Dean for Inclusion, Equity, and Diversity at Auburn University in their College of Science and Mathematics. Um, Dr. Mulligan is really passionate about providing a space for students to be able to see what they can become. Yeah, stating that representation matters and that the voices of people of color are desperately needed in the STEM fields uh, and working to create that space where those voices can, uh, where those voices can resonate uh, and creating opportunities for those voices and those individuals who want to be a part of this, uh, be a part of the STEM um, uh, community. Um, she talked about, and I remember sitting and reading, you never know by just being you how much you're going to change the trajectory of someone else um, some, for someone else. And I think that's so important because it speaks uh, to me about the importance of authenticity. And as you all know, I, I just believe in, this, in, the, in the idea uh, and the practice of being authentically yourself. Uh, and so, and having the courage to do so. And uh, she has definitely demonstrated that, uh, continues to create those spaces for those individuals and, and create an opportunity for those voices uh, that may not currently have the opportunity to voice them. So congratulations uh, to Dr. Mulligan, uh, another example of a Richland II alumni. I want to thank Richland District 2 for giving me this award. It means so much to me that my home um, institution where I got my foundation and my education thought enough of me 
to have me receive this award. Uh, I didn't know that it existed until <laughs> I received the email to say that I was going to get it. And it meant so much to me to know that my name is being spoke of in places that I didn't even know were there. Um, I think it speaks to a testament of maybe me being able to convey the passion that I feel for the work that I do. And that's really means so much to me because you don't go into, I, I, at least I didn't go into this work because I wanted to receive recognition. I wanted to do this work because I saw a need um, to provide opportunities for students who don't always get those opportunities. And so I've been blessed to be able to do that. And so I'm grateful to have this platform to be able to continue to talk to students and let them know like we're here, um, that we belong in STEM, that it's important for our voices to be in STEM, and that you have people who want to support you and give you the opportunity to do whatever it is that you want to do in these spaces. Our next honoree is someone that you might recognize both by face and by name. It's Dr. Henry Marion. Dr. Marion practiced medicine here in our Richland II community for many, many years. And when we announced who our honorees would be this year, I started receiving phone calls, text messages, and emails saying, I know him, he was my doctor, or he's my family doctor. We're so happy that you're recognizing him for the work that he has done. What we also found, though, is that now that he is at least semi-retired from yeah. the medical field, he's still giving back, especially to Joseph Keels Elementary right. School, as serving as a volunteer in that school. It talks about motivation comes from the heart. And if it's something that you enjoy doing, it's not work. Right? So serving as a physician in this community for 40 years, clearly he was motivated from his heart and it was something that he enjoyed doing, so he did not see it as work. And now he's giving back to our students at Joseph Kill Elementary. And he shared with us that he believed it was important for us to expose students to careers at a very early age. Uh, and hopefully he's exposing them to the medical career, and which I know that he is, uh, and those students are better for it. So it's an honor and a privilege to be able to recognize Dr. Mary, not only for his service, uh, in this community uh, and in the field of the medicine, uh, but also uh, to a service to our students here in Richland School District too. He's a joy to have, a joy to be around. We can understand why the students would enjoy yeah. having them, having him in their school. And so thank you, Dr. Marion, for what you have done um, for our students, what you continue to do for our community, and congratulations. congratulations. First, I'd like to say uh, what an opportunity. When I first got the, uh, the word about being a nominee uh, through Ms. Butler, uh, she asked, was I okay with it? And at first, you're a little bit hesitant about it, and I'm thinking, you know, as a volunteer or someone who wants to be supportive, you're not expecting to be awarded or rewarded for your works. But as she mentioned, I thought about it a little bit more, and I said, you know what, it, it would be okay to do that. And, uh, and when she called me with the excitement in her voice and said that, uh, You've received it, you've got it, you've got it. And I thought, wow. And uh, just the very fact of having to be nominated, I thought was good. It felt great to know that, but the fact of being the recipient uh, really, really let me know exactly how much work that I put in, that how it, how it influences kids, and how it makes me feel better, just to know that uh, sometimes you can be rewarded for the work you do. Uh, but for me, it's never been considered work. I've enjoyed just being, spending quality time with kids and helping them and anything that I can do to help uh, a career, a professional career, development in a career, is what I would do and always give it my best. I'd just like to say one thing as an interruption and uh, as an honoree, I'll take in the liberty to acknowledge the folks who've helped me, and I did not take one opportunity to acknowledge my wife, who was such a support to me, and all opportunities that I did, all the things that I missed, 
was because of her and her opportunity to help me so that I could help the kids. She also gave. So I'd just like to acknowledge her as well. Thank you. We're honored to have as part of our group that we're recognizing this year, Dr. Jason Williams. Dr. Williams, another Richland II graduate from Richland Northeast High School, is a physician. He's a pediatric cardiologist yes. with a specialization in imaging. Um, he works for the um, Nationwide Children's Hospital and is also an adjunct faculty member at Ohio State College of Medicine. He's done phenomenal work in his field, but has never forgotten his roots here in Richland District 2. Dr. Williams says that it took a village to raise this doctor, right? It took some, takes a village to raise, to become a medical doctor. Um, so I'm sure there's so many people in his community uh, that influenced him and aided him. He shares the importance of surrounding yourself with people who are able to help you and put you in a position and have, the, have an opportunity to re and to pour resources into you so that you can become this, the best version of yourself. And credits that credits growing up and seeing uh, African-American physicians, um, letting him know that it was indeed something that he could accomplish. Uh, and so we're grateful and thankful that he has provided uh, uh, services uh, in the medical field for all these years. And of course, honored to be able to recognize another Richland II alumni um, and from Richland Northeast High School uh, in this year's uh, honorees. Yeah. One of the things that um, Dr. Williams said to us as we were talking with him is that the Horizon Magnet Program at Richland Northeast really set him up for his um, future academic um, mm. career, that it gave him the skills that he needed to build on so that he could um, matriculate through college, through medical school, and now to be able to do the work that he's doing. And so it makes us feel good to know that um, someone of his caliber looks back and thinks the roots at Richland too, the roots at Richland Northeast are what helped me to be able to grow into who I am today. Congratulations. Congratulations, Dr. Williams. Dr. Williams Thank you is in. To oh, all I'm of sorry. the uh, teachers and um, staff, uh, faculty, and motivators who I've encountered um, throughout Richland, too, some of whom I keep in contact with to this day, um, who saw something in me and saw that I had a drive um, and a vision to, you know, do well in Richland, too, and then go on to um, go to college and become um, a physician. And um, that is not lost on me that it took a village to get me here, and I'm very thankful for it those in Richmond too who helped get me here. Dr. Williams' work schedule in Ohio would not allow him to be here tonight, and so his parents very generously came to represent him. We thank you so much for that. I have a couple of announcements that I would like to make. All of our honorees, if you would please come forward to the stage immediately at the end of the program, along with our board of trustees, so that we can get a group picture of you with our board members, if you would do that. Um, and at this time, I want to recognize another set of special people. Last year, we were in the midst of COVID, and our class of 2021 was not able to come out and have the kind of program that we're having this evening. We have some of them here tonight, um, and so I'll ask that as the um, PowerPoint moves forward, if you see your name, see your face, if you are here, if you will stand and remain standing, and at the end, we'll have an opportunity to recognize everyone.
give one big round of applause to everyone. <laughs> Thank you so very much. At this time, I'm going to ask Mrs. Kelsey Carter to come forward to do our acknowledgments. Good evening. Wow. What a wonderful way to end February, Black History Month, right? What a wonderful way to end Black History Month. Honoring all of our amazing honorees, both past and present. Uh, I have the pleasure of rendering the acknowledgments, and so I'm going to try to, hopefully I won't leave anyone out. <laughs> I've made some notes here uh, to make sure that I, I don't do that. Uh, first and foremost, please join me in applauding our Chief Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Officer, Dr. Helen Grant. She's amazing. We appreciate you, Dr. Grant, for your vision, your hard work, uh, and the vision in, in pulling all this together. But Tony Kenyon is the producer <laughs> of what you've seen tonight, so please acknowledge him as well. Uh, we'd like to thank all of those who have participated in the program, our amazing students. Please recognize our students at Ridgeview High School, Steel Pans, under the direction of Mr. Wesley Hips. Thank you. Dr. Wendy Campbell, who's our director of our, yes, Dr. Wendy Campbell in the back. <laughs> And wow, the string quartet, that was beautiful, absolutely beautiful, mesmerizing. Thank you so much. We'd also like to acknowledge uh, Dr. Davis, yeah? Mrs. Davis. <laughs> and that spoken word, right? That spoken word was amazing. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Um, as we continue with our acknowledgments, uh, I want to make sure that we acknowledge all of our volunteers, all of our committee members. If you could raise your hand or stand, thank you so much. Committee members, they're the folks that are wearing this, these, this little ribbon. Thank you, committee members. There's Kim Samuels in the back. Dr. Grant and I are uh, a staff of three. <laughs> <laughs> and Kim Samuels in the back is the administrative assistant who worked very hard uh, to help us with this Black History Month program. Uh, and before you leave, we have some nice little treats for you. Cake pops in the back. Compliments of Bonnie Brunt. And also the security boards that you have on the table. We want to thank um, uh, Bondit Grays uh, for providing those for us. And uh, we have our board members here, and I think Dr. Davis, you'll come up and do some more remarks. Uh, but we want to thank all of our board members for being present. Thank you all for being here. And I want to make sure I didn't leave any. Our conference center staff, Jackie Lee, Kim, Richburg, Will Ames, thank you all so much. They, they do a lot of work behind the scenes to pull all of this together. So we are very appreciative of, uh, of our conference center staff. And I think. I left you out, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm making sure I get everybody. But we want to thank all of you for attending tonight and joining us in our Black History Month celebration. To all our honorees, uh, past and present, thank you all for being here this evening. Be safe. And I'm going to turn the mic over to our superintendent, Dr. Baron Davis. Good evening. Good evening. So before I get started with my remarks, and I'm not going to try to hold you all along, I do want to take an opportunity to quickly also recognize that we've had an additional board member come in. Ms. Lindsay Agostini has joined us. Thank you, Ms. Agostini, for joining us. As well as we have our elected officials, one of our elected officials with us, our senator, Ms. Uh, Mia McLeod. Are there any other elected officials that are here that we can recognize? In addition to that, of course, I would also be remiss if I didn't also include in the recognition of elected officials. We have 
a member of the Richland One's uh, Board of Trustees, a Board of Commissioners, Mr. Jamie Devine, is who's with us today here supporting his wife, Tamika. So thank you, Jamie, for being with us in Richland Two today. So as you all know, if I haven't left anyone out, that has always been customary in our school district when we have an opportunity to get together with our village. So for those of you who know where we're going, I want you to reach over to your neighbor. I'm not preaching. And I want you to let them know what we're getting ready to do. Because they may not be necessary, they may not be familiar with this in Richland School District too, but it's our call and response. And let me tell you, this year more than any year, I need to say this. I need to ask this question, and I need for you all, our villagers, to answer this question with all that you have. And that question is, how are the children? Because the response is, all the children are well. Now let me tell you something, before you say it, this is not just some rhetoric that you need to repeat because you entertain yourselves or me. I need this to be something that you feel deep down in your bones and in your soul and in your heart, that every single day that you wake up, that the focus of this community is on kids, on the children, not just a Richland School District too, but the Colum city of Columbia, this county, and the state, and if we can impact that, we can impact the nation. But we have to mean it. We have to truly mean that the focus on what we do as a village is always on children and children first. So I'm going to ask the question, and this is in line with the Maasai tribe. When they were in Kenya, they would ask this question. And remember, these are some of the fiercest warriors and this was their response, not about fighting other tribes. It was about focusing on the resources or the most valuable resource that that tribe possessed, which was their future and their children. So I'm going to ask you, the villagers of this community, how are the children? And we'll say, how are the children? Now, I'm also going to greet you in something else that I want you to remember and this is from the Zulu tribe that talks about, I am because we are. And the phrase is Ubuntu. And it, rem it reminds us, and particularly this month, as we celebrate black history, because it's American history, it's all of our history, but we've had the distinction to be able to set aside 28 or 29 days to reflect and focus on the contributions of African Americans to the history of this country. The foresight of Carter G. Woodson when he started Negro Achievement Week back in 1926, I believe it was February the 7th, 1926. My history teacher at C.A. Johnson would be proud that I remember that. <laughs> so I give shout outs to them for that. But Ubuntu reminds us that I am because we are. That it's not about me, it's not about you, it's about we. It's about we. So say with me in unison on one, two, and three, Ubuntu. One, two, three. I am Dr. Baron Davis and I have the honor and the privilege of serving as superintendent in Richland School District 2. And I greet you on behalf of the members of our board of trustees and welcome you and thank you for giving of your time to celebrate and recognize our honorees today. I want to thank our board of trustees for the support, for allowing us this opportunity to continue to celebrate and recognize the members of our community who have had a tremendous impact, not only in this community, but in black history. Let me tell you kind of how this started, because Dr. Grant talked to you all about coming to me with this idea of what we can do to recognize the contributions of African Americans, particularly in our school district. And our school district is 90 plus years old. We're doing some research on really how old Richland School District 2 is because we have some things we're trying to figure out. But we know that it's almost 100 years old. And what could we do to recognize those individuals who had a tremendous impact on our community? And it started for me when I was a middle school principal and a high school principal. And during Black History Month, we would do the same thing that everybody else did. Research papers and projects 
on figures in black history. Now, when I was a student in high school and middle school, we did our papers on people like King and X, Satima Clark, Marcus Garvey, those individuals. But then when I became a principal, my kids were doing projects on 2 chains, <laughs> Nicki Minaj, Michael Jordan. And don't get me wrong, their contributions are important. <laughs> but I think they fail in comparison to those individuals who have blazed trails. So I had to put a moratorium on those projects. No more projects and research papers on 2 Chains and Nicki Minaj. I know everything I need to know about 2 Chains and Nicki Minaj. But more important, I need you to know more about Robert Smalls and Denmark Vesey. I need you to understand the contributions of those individuals, not just on a national level, but also here in South Carolina. So this opportunity gives our students, our community, a chance to recognize those individuals right here that we can actually touch and be inspired by and see and connect with. They're trailblazers in their own way. And I am confident that at some day, at some point in time, someone will be looking back and talking about the contributions of those individuals that we highlighted today. So we want to be able to give our students an opportunity to connect. We want to give our community an opportunity to connect with them today while they're here. And most importantly, that our students in Richland School District 2 and in the greater Columbia area can see exactly what an education can do for them, what their community can do to support them, but they can be and do anything that they put their mind to. And our job is to create the opportunity for them to be able to do so with as little barriers as possible. So we are creating a community of honorees in black history in Richland School District 2 and in the greater Columbia area. And I thank you all for the opportunity, for you all for coming here today and supporting this endeavor and this effort and continuing to serve our community the way that you have done so. And I hope that it continues to inspire our students, but most importantly, inspire our community. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you being here. We love you and have a great, great remainder of your night. Thank you for joining us this evening.